Doodle bud. Today I picked up my very first Kaweco Sport and I gotta say, look how tiny that pen is. I decided to pick one of these up. This was on my radar when I first got into fountain pens, but I didn't get it. I just thought maybe it's a little bit too small and uh, finally came back to this pen, thought why not, let's pick one up. This one is in the Bordeaux color and I got, this is the uh, bronze, the raw bronze clip. I know it doesn't match perfectly with the gold sort of accents, but I thought that bronze looks pretty sharp with that. We'll get you a few close up shots. So overall, I think the pen looks really good. I really like the looks of it. Uh, the, you know, the faceted cap here as well, just how the clip goes on. I find it looks a lot better with the clip. This logo here at the end on the finial, I really like the Kaveco logo, how they do that. Even the uh, on the side of the barrel, man, this focus is so slow in this camera. Uh, I like the logo, just the writing they do. The color looks really good too. In different lighting, if you have a softer light, it looks just really nice as well. But using it for me is a is a whole other ball game, you know. As a, <laughs> it's just so small. I mean, you take the cap off, and there's nothing to this little thing. It's like a like a golf pencil, right? When you're keeping score in your scorecard. So, I've had a little bit of trouble with this pen, but it does perform fairly well. I did have troubles with the nib out of the box. I have another nib, so we're gonna run through this real quick. There's a million Kaveco. Uh, reviews online so I'm not going to bore you much here but I'll give you my little thoughts on it and we'll take it from there. Comes in the tiny little basic cardboard box you know that's fine I don't get pens for the boxes good to go in the recycling all that kind of stuff on there as well. I ordered the uh, uh, so this has a fine nib on it I also ordered a broad just for something different and it's cool that's I mean that is really nice you can get other nibs for this pen real easily and they're very reasonably priced as well so I ordered another one they do look nice uh I like the again like I said the logo on there it's I think it's they said 23 karat gold plate so decent plating on there it's not solid of course uh so that was pretty cool and then <laughs> this, this little converter it's so cute it's like a little baby mouse or something um, but it's it's very well made. It works really well. Nice action to it. Nice and smooth. It's got a nice little stop on the bottom as well. Um, and also to it un undoes. So you just unscrew it. Away it comes. Pops off. You can get in there. Clean it all out. You can grease it. Service it. So uh, for a teeny little mini converter, which it has to be to fit in that pen, I think they did a really nice job on uh, this. There's the clip there since, what, 1883. So they've been around. They know what they're doing. You know, they make some good pens. I've, I've actually been very close to pulling a trigger on uh, on the vintage Kaveco pen. Those seem to intrigue me a little bit more. Um, but you can see that the cap, when it's it's capped on here, it makes up like the majority of the length of the pen. Um, it, you know, uncapped, it is just so small diameter wise as well. And uh, posted, it is better. But um, just because it is a very small diameter, very short pen, it is a little bit challenging for me to use the pen comfortably, but uh, I understand, you know, it's a pocket pen, so maybe this isn't, I mean, again, if you like smaller pens, you'll love this, but um, maybe for longer writing sessions, this isn't the ideal pen for that. If you have a larger hand or, or just for comfort and stuff, it's meant to be a little pocket pen, but I know I do, there are many people that love this pen and collect them all and use them all, and they this is probably their favorite pen. I can see why, like, I really want to like this pen, um, but this, the stature is just uh, too tough for me to overcome. But we'll go through it. It's a quick to uncap pen, right? So not too many turns here. We got what, one, yeah, one turn on the button. I like that with a threaded cap. One thing I do notice, the plastic isn't overly uh, durable. You can see it, you know, I haven't had this for very long and it does scratch up pretty easy, at least in the darker colors, you can see it, even though it's like materials, it does scratch up pretty quick. Um, faceted cap on here. One thing I noticed is there is this uh, seam here. Now at first I almost thought, is that two piece? And this goes on, but that didn't really make sense. I don't see any seams on the inside when I illuminate it to light it up. So maybe that's just from the mold and from the injection molding but you do, I don't know, here, let's get you zoomed in here um, if we can see that, but you can see there's that little seam you can see, you can even see like over here, for example, you can see the little bit of a step 
on some places it's not as much but on other places it's more so i almost thought that was two piece i don't think it is um, but you can also on certain parts here if we can get the lighting just right it seems like it's off just a touch on the alignment see like on this one here now again this is a nitpick this does not affect the performance of the pen but that line is over just a hair compared to that line. So you don't really notice those things. You can see a little bit more again there. It's actually a little more obvious. But when you have very sharp, crisp lines, uh, you can see right away when another line does not line up to that one. So again, doesn't impact the pen. Doesn't, <laughs> doesn't make it a bad pen. Just something I notice when I'm really looking at it. I really like the looks of it i just i feel they need a uh a chunky version a big version of this pen and i would really enjoy it um again comes apart nice the threads are all good it's uh it's made interestingly here so we got this this whole piece here is one piece injection molded you can see they left a the little uh nipple there on it from the injection so they could have just touched that a little bit to get rid of that that would have been a nice little feature and it's got uh, a little grippiness here sort of not quite a neural but sort of kind of like that on the end here that's that's into the molding and then you got the section uh holding the feed and everything else here the main body you can see there's a seam on it you could catch in that light there you can see that line so it's a two piece that goes together you can still see the seam on there as well so you know okay um and then you got and this is one thing i don't know maybe it's just my pen but i noticed for the cartridge i've been playing with the cartridge it it just doesn't fit as tight as i, oh, I get ink on me now it doesn't fit as tight as i would like the converter seems to fit in really nice and solid it's in there it just snaps nicely and of course this is leaking and it works quite well but the uh yeah the cartridges i don't know maybe leave a little comment maybe i don't know what i'm doing wrong here but just it seems to just go in but not really eh, snap in nice and tight let me clean that up hold on all right cleaned up here and uh, back to the nib here give you a little close up as well you know i like the looks of it the work on it the little uh, details it's got germany on the nib there as well since uh, 1883 the date and the little logo as well this is a fine i got i gotta tell you um <laughs> out of the box this i i think this was just a fluke was probably the worst nib i've ever had for a new pen the uh the tines were misaligned and they were jammed so tight together there was no gap this thing would barely even write scratchy as hell and uh just wasn't working so uh, i i popped it off it does come out of the feed and i mean out of the section here you just I'll, i'm going to swap out so you'll see in a minute you grip it and pull and twist and pull it out and um normally you know if i need to adjust a nib it's maybe 30 seconds or something this was about a five minute battle just to open the the gap up a bit to a respectable amount to get decent flow and then had to realign normally it's like maybe 30 seconds for a quick adjustment so yeah it was pretty terrible um but now i got it adjusted and it writes wonderfully good flow feels good all that kind of stuff so again that's the advantage i preach about this a lot knowing just some basic stuff because uh, otherwise it's a real pain in the butt you got to send the pen back or they got to send you another nib yes it should have been just fine but this happens you know you get duds sometimes it happens as part of all products in life so i'm going to give you a quick little writing sample go through it we'll swap out the nib i'll show you that i think i got in here i'm actually just using the cartridge i thought why not i never use uh the cartridges that comes with pens so i thought let's do it for this uh for this review here so this is the Kaveco sport uh, this is in the Bordeaux. This is a fine nib as well. Of course, it's steel. And it's not too bad. A little bit feedbacky, but decent flow. Writes well. I mean, this is, again, it's a pocket pen. So this is, I think it writes how it should write for that. Very portable. Uh, now that it's adjusted, I, I quite like it. It's a good writer. And uh, again, it's just a little bit tricky for me to use uh, as a regular daily writer pen as well. So let me uh, swap out the nib. We'll show you how to do that real quick and show you what the broad looks like. It's still ink, but essentially you just, it's a grab and then a twist and a pull out action. There we go. It all comes out one piece together. As you can see, I'll pop the other one in here. It comes in a collar. When I first got it, I thought, uh, oh, this whole thing threads out, but uh, no dice on that. So same thing. There we go. 
slide it in. It is nice, the, the feature how the nib fits in there. Um, if you can see on there, there's a little ridge on the feed to fit the nib to tell you where to go. So that's a nice little feature with it. Pop that on. Let's use the converter this time. This teeny little cute as a button. Look at that. And I'm going to throw in some DC Super Show. Let's just go side by side so you can see a massive difference. Of course, it's abroad. Um, what I'm going to do afterwards is give you some size comparisons of some of my other uh, small pens and some of my other big pens as well. So it's quite juicy being abroad, which it should be. Um, you know, look at that. <laughs> Lots of nib for a little pen like this. What I think I am going to do, and I intended this uh, when I bought the broad, is I think I'm going to grind it. Uh, whether it's a cursive italic or possibly even a bleak, I'm going to look at the tipping. We've got lots of tipping to work with there. Um, I don't know, maybe I even do a double-sided grind. Something cool on the bottom side and something different on the top side. Uh, lots of flow. Uh, this is just Muji paper. It's getting to be almost a little too much for this Muji. I might have to use just Rhodia for this, but plenty wet. This one is very smooth. I mean, it's abroad, so it should be, but as far as alignment and flow, this one is, is perfect. So uh, the fact that the fine here was just seriously missed, uh, I'll just check that off as a bit of a fluke, as a one-off as far as quality. This is a mega popular pen, and people say they write wonderfully. And I've used them in the store. Uh, just, you know, I tried them out and never bought it, and I've tried other people's as well, and they've all felt really great. So I think this was just a weirdo nib that kind of got through the quality control. But So this is by far the smallest pen I got. I did get this knockoff Kaveco uh, brass version on AliExpress. Uh, it's, it's a fairly popular pen that people are buying online. It's like, I don't know, five, six bucks or something. I thought this was small. This is even smaller. Some other small pens I have are some vintage ones, some Schaefer's. I don't have my Pelican 140 on me. That's at the office. Uh, that one was, I thought was small, but it's quite comfortable. So it just, it sort of just pushes it and pushes it. And then for me, for my, the size of my hand, this just, just, it's too little for me to use on a regular basis. There's a lot I like about the pen. Um, I know that it's supposed to be a pocket pen, but that's what it's intended. So it's going to be small. Um, I just think they should have an XL, Kaweco Sport XL or a Kaweco Sport on steroids, something that's for me, the biggest thing with this is it's just so tiny for me. I think there's probably other folks out there that, um, cause there's lots of cool colors and you can, you know, get different colored clips or no clip, lots of nib options. So there's a lot going for this pen. Uh, I just think a, a bigger version. If they came up with that, I think that would, there, again, this is just me spitballing, but I think there'd be enough demand for that, that uh, people would pick that up as well. I can see why it's kind of collectible. It's just, it's a cute little pen. It's sharp looking. I really like the uh, the badging here, the finial cap, the Kaveco logo on there as well. Um, but just overall, will this be a daily writer, daily user for me? Probably not. Um, maybe once I grind this nib, maybe I'll use a little bit more because uh, it'll be a cool writing nib. Let me know in the comments if you want to want me to see me do that in the before and after as well, or if you just want to see the final result or the grind as well. Those are my thoughts on the Kaveco Sport Classic and that really beautiful looking Bordeaux with that bronze clip. I think it's a very sharp looking pen. I just wish it wasn't so teeny weeny. Uh, XL version, like I said, would be really cool. I think I'd do that again, but until they do that. I don't think I'd buy another one. It's just not overly usable. To, I know it's supposed to be a pocket pen, but I got bigger pockets and bigger hands. So anyways, likes, comments, subscribes are always welcome and we will catch you next time.